It is good morning, Monday the 14th of October. 9.31 now, if you're interested in times. And we're here with Rachel. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Ian. Uh, morning, Alfie. Sorry. Good morning, Alfie. Good morning, morning Alfie. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> good morning, Rachel. <laughs> and Rachel is an author. Uh -huh. How long have you been an author for? Uh, technically published since 2022. Wow. Long, long time. No, Not, it's only two years. Only two, two years. Yeah, but you started in when you were thirteen. I started writing when I was thirteen. Okay. Yeah. How do you go about writing a book? How do you start? Because well, I, I I thought about doing it. Yeah. And you sit there and you. I'm just gonna go make a cup of tea. I'll come right back. And you get off and make a cup of tea, and you come back, and on the way back, you get distracted by something else, and you get back there, and you think. No, I haven't got time to do it now. It's not easy, and I'm lucky because as a project manager, I've worked remotely for so many years, so the self-discipline of sitting down, starting something and staying there has been embedded through my career. And I'm actually doing a course for people with either diabetes and then the other courses for writing in order to say how you can do your first book, because more and more people are inspired by me thinking, I'm their friend, I'm just a normal person. They've always wanted to write a book, so if I can do it, they can do it. So it helps when you know somebody, because then you realise you don't have to have superpowers to write a book, but you do have to find some discipline. So the advice I always give is schedule time with what suits your lifestyle. So as a single parent, I would wait, I would put loads of stuff in the garden on a sunny day for my twins to play with when they were babies and toddlers, and then I would sit and write. And when they were in the house, I would put toys down or loads of paint down and then I'd sit at the table and write whilst they sat and painted. I would also get them to do, so if you're a parent, you can get your kids to write their own books. My children loved drawing their book and then I would type up little words to what story they wanted, print it out and then paper clip it together. And then they would sit there reading their own books for hours and then I could write a chapter. So you can find a way. And then if you don't have children, you can say, okay, every other weekend I'm going to go away for the weekend to a hotel and write. I've got a friend who lives not far from here, she's trying to finish her first book now and she says I cannot concentrate at home so she goes to a cafe, two hours here, two hours there and she schedules it in her week, in between her appointments, in between her clients. If you schedule your time and you've got to then make sure you stick to it, that is the best What way. happens if you get an interruption? You can have an interruption and come back to it but the problem, it's best not to have too many interruptions, but you know, I'm a single mum, I had to deal with that all the time. And- Do you kind of get a flow with it? Does you it get flow? a flow, yeah. And then you get an interruption and you're like, right, where was I? Yeah, and then you have to go back. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you, it's like when you're reading a book and you just have to go back to the beginning of the chapter because you can't remember the last three paragraphs. And you get really emotional if someone interrupts you in a good part. So for example, I was writing a scene in my book that was really emotional. And I started crying as I'm typing it. And then my cats and dogs all start swarming by me to comfort me. And I'm like, no, get out of the way. You're ruining my mojo. <laughs> so, sorry. And they're trying to, or if one of the, the, the children now are actually worse as teenagers for interrupting me. Because when they were toddlers and they'd come up, they'd want something simple and you'd give it them. Now they'll start bickering or arguing behind me. And then it's like, I can't focus, I can't concentrate. And it's like, get lost, you little monkeys. And it's like, they're worse as teenagers. And I can get really upset. It, it, you have to deal with that as part of life, but it is really upsetting because if you're in your creative flow and someone interrupts you, if it's not an emergency, you either want to cry or murder someone. <laughs> you see, you say that. When I was young, um, my mum is a, just a reading addict. Mm. I've never known anybody read so much as my mother. And I used to come home from school and there'd be like, um, on the Argo, there'd be like a, a, a stew or something just bubbling away. Yeah. As well. Upstairs, there on my bed, reading a book. Been there for two hours reading it. Great, good for her. Uh, do you know, it's one of the most beautiful escapisms ever. Too many children now are losing the technique of reading, which means that you have that dopamine hit from technology, but you're not getting that pure escapism that you teach your brain to achieve when you read. And um, I learned this from a lady at a church in um, Goring, actually. We did a, she did a talk. My twins were about two at the time. And I'd been a single mom for less than a year. I was really miserable with that. I'm used to being a career woman and I need my brain to work. And I found being a stay-at-home mom really miserable. It just, I didn't like it. Changing nappies all the time didn't stimulate my brain. So writing kept me sane. But on that night, she said, as a, sing as a mom, not a single mom because it was all moms, as a mom, 
you have to find something you really enjoy and make sure you do it for at least 10 minutes a day and what surprises me now is i look back at that time and think i was shocked and horrified thinking i don't have 10 minutes in a day and when you've got twins you honestly don't think you have 10 minutes to spare in any day because it's non-stop it's relentless but i from that night on read for 10 minutes every night then i found 30 minutes every day and i made sure i read before bed every night because that was the only thing that made me happy was reading i can relate to that when mm. when you become more organized you start to say well i'll do that and then i'll do this and then i'll do that yeah oh hold on a minute i've got some spare time here i yeah. can do that then i'm very rigid yeah. with my time and i i lose friends over it because i'm not there to answer the phone when they want and there i have friends who have boundaries and they don't answer the phone when i want so i lose friends over it but it's like but that's my only window and i actually can't talk to anyone really until after 8 30 9 30 at night because i work in the day and then i do my urgent stuff then i feed everyone and then it's 8 30 9 o'clock and then it, it's too late to ring people <laughs> have, you, have you got any questions I, well, I was just thinking because like the inspiration for the books, do you ever get like writer's block when you're writing them? So there, there's a concept as to whether or not writer's block exists. And there's um, an argument in the writing field on this. And um, I, I think writer's block does exist. Some people suffer from it for years. But I think that's also part of our anxiety and traits. So I've been asked this question before, how do I deal with writer's blocks? The way I look at it, I'm very imaginative. I have a lot of stuff coming into my head. So I don't think I've really truly experienced writer's block. And that's not my thing. But what I'll do is I'll get stuck on a chapter or a scene. And then I will, my dogs unblock me. I go for a nice dog walk. I talk to them like a lunatic across the field. And I talk out the scene or I create scenes. I, I swear one of my Labradors created the book with me more than me. Oh, wow. Yeah, because just conversations with her just really helped create the scenes. And she stars in my book. She's called Fudge. My fox red Labrador is in there. And my husky is my Chewbacca on the, who comes into the Galactic Federation. So my dogs are a big part of this writing too. They unblock me. And quite often what my Labrador would tell me on these walks is the whole scene is rubbish. Just get rid of it. And I would start from scratch. So I, I personally feel if I get writer's block, I'm on the wrong road. Okay. That's how I look there at it. There we go. <laughs> All right, we'll have another tune and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the future. Okay. We're talking to, how do you say your surname? Uh, R.E. Lewin. R.E. Lewin. So is it Rachel? Lewin, Lewin, yes. Rachel Lewin. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you.